A lot of people think the 3D cursor is very ugly, not because it looks like a cross that you would use for a gun, but it's about being ugly on the inside. And they are wrong. Also, they were mostly newcomers on forums being angry because the 3D cursor used the left click by default in all the Blender versions, which wasn't the most convenient for those who well, used any other program before Blender. But they changed this for Blender 2.8 and now the 3D cursor can be moved with either the icon on the left toolbar or with shift right click, which makes a lot of sense and making Blender blend in better with other software while still retaining the quick usage of the cursor. In this video I will show all the good features that the 3D cursor has and why you will like it in the end, in case you remember the old times when the cursor was placed in conveniently for newcomers. Place objects with the help of the 3D cursor. One of the simplest and best ways to use the 3D cursor is to spam different objects in a big scene wherever you want. What I mean by this is that when you have bigger scenes like arc with interiors or big exteriors, you don't want the objects to appear at the original origin point as you would have to always pan the view there, grab them and place them into their rightful place. See how painful it is to do it? My hands are falling off from the stress, it's seriously bad. Not just that, but the clock is ticking and time is money, as we know the truth. And money is life, of course, so we don't want to end our life with uh, tiresome and useless things when we are modeling things. Especially, it doesn't make sense when you think about that the 3D cursor is your friend that can help you. Just use shift right click to the desired place and bada bidi bidi boom boom ba bada bidi bidi, it's gonna spam right there, it's very effective. It's very convenient and fast to quickly place different objects into a big scene. And you use the free Asset Manager plugin, it's also helpful to spam your objects right to a place where you want them instead of manually always grabbing them and placing them into a room or a grass field or whatever you are making. You can do the same if you want to create an object that consists of more parts and if you don't need precise 100% accurate symmetry, it's easier to just shift right click on the top and continue modeling. Of course, the 3D cursor saves us again, which is generous from him. Modeling the smart way can save you valuable time, so go ahead and use it when you can. It's always simpler to build scenes when you don't have to catch models all the time. This modeling advantage brings us to the second reason why the 3D cursor needs more love than what it's currently got. Change the origin point of an object with the 3D cursor. It's easy to change the origin of an object with the 3D cursor. If you want more precise control, it's possible to recalculate the origin position of an object to the location of the 3D cursor. It's very quick to do in Blender 2.8 and reduces the time involved when you rotate or move a lot of objects. And modeling, this feature is still helpful. If you want to place different things to the edge of the object for example, it's easy to snap the cursor to an actual point of a mesh and span new objects there for absolute correct modeling. And the best thing is, you can change the origin point of multiple objects at the same time to the 3D cursor which is very good for models that consist of different objects and you want to resize or rotate them correctly without them sinking into the floor. What I mean by this is for example this. The lamp is rotating nicely, so does Mr. Lilith's sofa. The sofa consists of different objects but because all of them have the origin point at the same location they will all spin around that point. Every time you resize or move the objects, they won't melt into the ground, they will stay on top if you set up the origin points nicely. Use the 3D cursor as a temporal pivot point. If you don't want to keep changing the origin of the objects, that's completely fine. The 3D cursor is also used as a temporal pivot point or a temporal origin for objects if you want to keep the perfectly preset location of the origin points. An example for this is opening or closing windows around the temporal pivot point. It's more convenient this way, without destroying the original origin of the object if you have a reason not to do that. The best way to use the temporal pivot point is for cameras and animations. 
and you have a simple plane that you want your camera to rotate around, it's easy to just snap the origin to the middle of the plane and then snapping the 3D cursor to it and then using this as a pivot point. The camera will always rotate around the plane which is easy for animations. Of course you can get creative and use empties and objects for different kind of abstract animations where it's also easier to add the 3D cursor somewhere than rotate stuff around. This is also a lifesaver when we resize stuff, for example this curtain. Now we change the size of the curtain to reach the floor, we could spend ages fixing this mess. Also, we don't want to ruin the origin point because maybe later we want to rotate it around the middle, that makes sense, so instead of changing the pivot point all the time, we can click here with the 3D cursor and resize the curtain in this direction. And it's working perfectly. We can now put the 3D cursor here on the side and make the curtain smaller to this side. It will take multiple clicks without our 3D cursor. Align the transformation orientation to the 3D cursor. This is an interesting thing to do. If your object is flipped and you want custom axis to move your objects around, the default Z, X, Y axis won't work. This is when the 3D cursor shines as it's easy to do this with its help. Let's go to the 3D cursor icon and change the orientation from view to geometry. Now that it's snapped to the side of the geometry, it will create new axes that can be used to move the objects around. For this, you need to set the transform orientations to the 3D cursor. And you have it. It's good for tilted level designs or when you want to preserve straight lines around tilted objects. This is a very rarely used feature that can help in some extreme cases, but when you need it, it's a lifesaver. Hope you like this video, make sure to turn on the notifications to see the newest tutorials. Check out my stuff on CG Trader, I have some free models, and if you want to support me feel free to buy some models. Links are in the description.